New tanks, new substrate. World, how's it going? I hope you guys are all doing great. Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be covering some new tanks and some new substrate. I'm kind of doing some experiments with eco complete capping, sand, some other stuff, a dirt my first dirted tank so this is going to be interesting before we get rolled into all of it though i'm going to show you a few quick clips i've got to raise some money for the american life bearer association i am trying to get some funds up so i can get that going i've got some stuff on my website i wanted to show you guys that real quick and if you guys like this content and want to support or and don't want to get something I also have a tip jar on my website and you can join Patreon as well under LRB Aquatics. And I appreciate your time and all you guys who are supporting me already. Big thank you to you guys. You guys help me keep this going and progressing because it really gets tough to fund a lot of these projects. But anyways, let's get to it. Got a lot of plants on the site for sale. LRBAquatics.com Lots of pearlweed, Rotala, Colorado Guppy grass Pingu guppies Chili red inlers And may even be some fire reds left on the site too And some other shrimp My Patreons have kind of got their fill And I need to raise some money for the American Live Bear Association coming up So help me out guys please also a bunch of red metallic crip which is on sale usually it's 20 bucks for a plant anywhere else you go i'm gonna sell them for 10 they usually are 15. since these items are all homebred and i don't do any importing or anything like that it takes time for this stuff to grow so often things are out of stock but if you go to the special buy section that's a good cumulative of what's actually in stock and readily available and i was going to do this in a separate video but with my time and getting videos out it's really hard for me to hit all the subjects i want to because i only got so much time in a day and i don't have a video editor or anything like that so now let's do this all right, so here we are in the garage section. And over here I've been adding some tanks. And I think it's time to go ahead and start substrating these. Sticking some plants in, get it going. Now, a big reason why I haven't done it yet is because I've been looking for laterite. And a lot of the places I go to now, they don't even know what laterite is. So I don't know what it is around me but I cannot get laterite or any kind of clay based substrate to save my life but luckily I had some dirt from when I did this terrarium this one right here my first and only terrarium that I did from my backyard and added some aquarium plants some bacopa some other stuff but I had some dirt left and it's actually been sitting all winter now I don't know how clean it is. It's like pink. That's weird. But anyways. I'm going to try it out. Might as well. There's nothing living in it. I know that much. And yeah. Let's try out a dirted tank. So my idea was. I, I, I wanted the clay or the laterite. And then I was going to top it off with eco complete. But now since I can't get that. I'm going to just try regular yard dirt. And we don't really spray any chemicals in our yard, so I'll do some water changes. I'm actually going to quarantine plants first with this. And, uh, yeah. So, I won't be adding fish right away. That way, water changes should be able to help leach anything that may be in there. We'll see. Then I'll just throw some poor canary fish in there. And also why I'm at it, that Eco Complete, I got some of this from my buddy Judd. 
at the aquatic experience a couple years back and I never had a chance to use it and it's a coconut fiber bedding that's supposed to make you can complete just that much better I'm gonna go ahead and test that in a couple of these tanks so I'll probably do one with one without down here and up there actually I'm and up here, I guess I got another one for up there. So I got a few to do with those, so those all will be eco complete. And then I don't know, I'll do dirt over here somewhere. And I got some sand to mess with too. So I bought a few different types. I'm a big fan of this. is one of my favorites. Is the Supernaturals? It's really, really white. This one's all right kind of big drain but this is great for quarries because it's so soft and then this one's more like kind of river rock all right so time to get to it so this mat coconut mat is kind of neat though I think somebody's grandma done yarned up the yard made a mat out of it Pretty wild. It says to soak it for 24 hours, but I don't have time for that. Now I did go ahead and rinse this off, but, and it was pretty clean, so I'm not too worried about it. This is a 20 high, and one of those, looks like you'd need two for a 20 high. I only have three, so I'm going to only do like half of these tanks with it. And do like the back half because I'm going to want the front of it more open anyway. Oh, and before I forget, I need to add some cycled aquarium water in there. I'm going to get one of my dirty filters in a bucket and all that and just get some dirty, mommy, nice, beneficial water in first. That way I don't have to wait so long for a cycle and I could put my plants in there first and foremost never get tired of walking past this tank so many cool things I see throughout this fish room for instance uh, a pseudomugle and one of these rainbow fish have like made a relationship it's really weird I've seen them mating like two different days a little pseudomugle like that and a big rainbow fish like that that may even be the one some weird stuff goes down in here sometimes now some of you guys may remember my TOT with my mommy does mom kill tank this is where I'm gonna pull my water from because what better than all that nice seasoned beautiful mom I'm gonna just get it right off the top of that Anubius shake that up a little bit give me a bunch I'll be good be good Recycled beneficial bacteria. All right, I changed my mind. I'm gonna add that dirty water at the end. That way, I don't suffocate the beneficial bacteria with the dirt or the substrate, and it can just be free to live. And as far as tank selection, as this test will go, see, I'll have the dirt in here. I'll have the rhizomat in there, and then regular eco complete in here. And these three tanks are the most evenly lit tanks throughout the whole row because as you can see, it actually doesn't cover all of it. So it'll be a good way to judge and tell. All right, mats are in. Now it's time to mess with the dirt. And I'm gonna go through, there's like roots and stuff, some bigger pieces of bark, a little bit of grass. I'm gonna get like the bigger bits, but I'm not gonna get too meticulous because most of it will either float or decay in here if it's not too big it won't make big, much of a difference and it'll just become plant food and then i'm just going to add like an inch of this or something we'll see now i am going through and breaking up some of the bigger chunks here which it's kind of hard so i'm guessing there's some clay in here which should be good. I'm I'm really liking the consistency of it too. Like just the even just the feel of the dirt. Seems like it'll work pretty well. 
And this is just good old Indiana USA dirt straight from the backyard. At least I believe it is. Unless they brought some in from somewhere else whenever they built the house, but I highly doubt that. And this came out from the woods too. Which I live in a, a subdivision. So I don't have much for woods. But always be careful when using dirt. But at the same time we shouldn't fear dirt either. Because I mean this is what it grows in the wild. As the old saying goes God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Alright so I got it filled up with dirt to about the top of the trim here. I went ahead and left a high spot in the front so I can kind of see how it roots hopefully maybe we'll see. and we'll see how it does with a higher elevation of dirt over here in the corner in the future all right so I got dirt in these two I didn't have enough for down here but I'm thinking I may do sand over here to help compensate for the lack of light the white sand substrate actually helps Reflect a lot of light which is beneficial to the plants in a lower light situation But we'll get back to that sand here in a little while and see what we do with that now the tricky part's gonna be this dirt and How am I get that eco complete on the dirt without it getting too destroyed? I'm guessing I probably want to go ahead and put it on it while it's dry. I'm gonna try that out All right, so pouring it straight on top actually was idea, and it didn't it didn't mix it up or anything. And this is gonna save me a lot on eco complete. All right, that's a nice sizable layer in that tank, and that's only one bag of eco complete with a little bit of that dirt. That's pretty sweet. Now to add eco complete to here, 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 and here. Now I am gonna go ahead and test out some of this Carabasi Florospora, which is like a fungus for plants and for them to root better. You can see it floating in the air. I already put some in this tank. Pretty sure I got some up my nose. But it's pretty simple, just sprinkle on bottom of a bare bottom I don't know how good it is to be breeding that stuff in I don't know much about it you know fungals are all over the place but I'm only gonna do these two tanks and these two tanks for comparisons because I've done eco complete before normally so this will help give me an idea of what it does and then same with that test so it still doesn't mess with any test this will be just dirt and eco complete all right eco complete is in and as you can see it's all pretty much a level that's because I'm not really trying to escape these tanks too much it's just pretty much for stocking reasons but remember hardscaping elevations Hardscape is the backbone to a good aquascape. That's not what we're doing here. Now I am gonna, I got some API pond media that I'm gonna put on the bottom underneath Eco Complete for here, and I'm gonna do a couple tests with that. I wish I already had it for the sand. I may just go ahead and just do this one sand for now, and may do that one sand. Then these I may leave bare or do like rock pebbles since they'll be good for like breeding since they'll be nice and dark. Alright as I mentioned earlier I have a few options for sand here. This is all carob sea. Here I got the crystal river. It looks more grainy. Probably not going to use that. I already know which one I'm going to use. This seems pretty nice. This is the moonlight. And uh, it's a darker scene. I like how fine it is though. Seems like it'd be a good scene. Then here's the Peace River. It's kind of like 
River Rock. And then here's one of my favorites. This is the Supernatural. And it's a lot wider, so I definitely will like this white contrast next to the Eco Complete here. I think it'll pop more. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of that into it. I don't know yet. I decided to use these big rocks instead. And I went ahead and put a little sand down so I don't end up accidentally breaking the glass. Because it just sounds awful throwing rocks on glass. And I'm also putting the rocks where the water is coming down. Figured this would be nice for like quarry cats to scatter their eggs in and other fish or whatever. Now with the Rhizo mat, this is about one and a half bags of Eco Complete. Without the Rhizo mag, without the Rhizo mat, this is two bags of Eco Complete, about the same. And then with the dirt, it's only one bag of Eco Complete. And as far as this sand, the natural sand, which they're smaller bags, actually only 10 pounds. Now I only used one 10 pound bag of sand for this tank and it's, it's pretty deep for the sand. You don't want to go too deep with sand from what I hear, I don't know. I haven't tested it, but that's what I hear. And this one only had one and a half. Alright, so I got these three up here going, these going down here, and these two. I think I'm just going to wait for different substrates for the other tanks to do some more testing and fiddling. And now it's time to add water. Fill her up. Now my main drive for staying up real late and getting this done is to get these plants in. These are from the Massey Swap in. Yeah, they've been in the bag since then. Getting close to a week. So I've got to, I got to put them somewhere. Wow, this is the underneath of that Nymphia Zenkeri. Absolutely beautiful. It had a little baby on it too, so I broke it off. Nymphia dobiniana. There's another lily or lotus I got. And look at the colors on this thing. This thing is cool. Wild colors. Can't wait to see that grow out. Yeah, that's hot pink. And what I'm going to end up doing with this, these will be like my tall trees, and then I'm going to end up using like the sage and the minute to do a little foreground. Here I have some bark clay along the folia. Looks like it's starting to flower. Now these plants were in a lot better condition when I got them. I just let them sit too long, so I have been rinsing them off, getting the dead decaying material off. The root system and balls is uh, looking pretty good, so should bounce back. Alright, so it is the next day later. I didn't put any plants down here, I just didn't have any for it. But, I do have everything planted. Instead of going through all the plants, I just figured I would just show you guys what it looks like and I got a few plants up here not a whole lot so the main test here though is going to be with these stems in the background these are Luigia Lysistris and we're going to just kind of use those to gauge the differences since that's dirt that's the rhizo mat and that's regular eco complete but i think it turned out pretty well just let the plants grow in a little bit probably need to buy some more plants and yeah i'm excited got the air going and yeah for my first dirted tank i'm pretty excited about it now i did kick up the dirt here and there reburying the filter but it really does blend pretty well with this Eco Complete. We'll see if that settles back down or what. 
but I'm already digging it just how the plants rooted in and how I think it's gonna work out pretty well I'm excited I am excited Wow, I could already tell some pretty good sized growth on this slutter eye or schluter eye this right here was not nearly that big yesterday so maybe I can get a picture I wish I didn't have to do videos all the time because then I could time lapse this even more but it is what it is but yeah this is a dirted tank as well so I think I may go ahead and go outside and get a bunch of this dirt and let it dry out on my asphalt I'll put it in a container or something so nothing leaches into it. But yeah, dry it out. That way it gets all the bugs out and everything. Cool, dirt. Alright, so this is awesome. This came in before I ended up doing the video. And now I can add some more substrate. Alright, this is a big bag too. 25 pound bag. A lot bigger than I thought it would be. So compared to Eco Complete, let me pull this out. There you go. There's a comparison. 25 pound bag. Supposedly 20 pound bag? Hmm. Interesting. It's a big difference. That doesn't seem like a five pound difference. Anyways, I'm gonna use this on the bottom. I'm gonna cap it with the Eco Complete. Now I can set up a couple more tanks for this video. And a quick overview of the tanks here. Got some new growth on this lotus here. That's a Zenkirai Nymphia. Then the Sag is doing pretty good. And over here, on the other tank next to it looks like I got new growth going on that stem plants look like they're doing okay and what's great is we can go back and check the growth on videos too, like see how well it did but these look like they're growing some definitely new growth down there new growth that's good these guys look pretty happy with this dirt they're already pretty tall. And same here, new growth in these. So this is how the tanks are looking. Now the top's a little different, it's a little sadder. But, this sword is putting on a lot of new growth. That's probably going to be a tank buster, which is awesome. I, I've been wanting a big sword for a while. And... I actually found this within my hydrocotyl. I believe it's mermaid weed. Something like that. I think that's right. And it's got new growth. So all good there. Hydrocotyl still. Hydrocotyl still looks good. And flame moss looks like it's doing pretty good. Now I did sprinkle some rocks in the flame moss to just kind of hold it down too. As you can see with the new water, new tanks, you always get... A lot of air bubbles and they can tend to float those up so I just sprinkled some eco complete in to help latch it down the moss will eventually grab a hold of those rocks as well and it'll give the mat some mass which is a nice little trick and recently started doing it it only makes sense all right what's up carob C I don't know what's going on here but it must be a density thing this says 20 pounds and this is 25 pounds holy crap that was only 25 bucks too PetSmart I rarely ever get anything from PetSmart but I had to order it online you guys don't go buying it all though because I may need some more alright so I know we haven't seen a whole lot of results yet but I can already tell you that this API Aquatic Plant Media, considering how big that bag is and how much it can cover, it'll probably be my go-to for the underlayment and then Eco Complete on top. Now I am really liking the Indiana Dirt, so I'll probably do some more of that, but it takes me more time to create that Indiana Dirt 
because I gotta let it dry outside, make sure all the bugs get out of it. Best way to do that is put it in some kind of container that's not gonna leach out onto a driveway or something. That way the heat just gets all those bugs out and then you can use it. But it takes a process. So for the bang for the buck, this stuff's pretty good. And if you don't have the money, then my money is gonna go towards uh, dirt. But I'm excited to see what this underlayment done does. I should have started doing this a long time ago, but you know, when you're building a fish room, you're just trying to build it. And I am jumping to conclusion by saying this as well, because I don't know how this is going to settle with the Eco Complete as well. So we'll see how that works out. All right, so a little bit covered quite a bit. Now I do have it kind of swept back from the front. That way you won't see it once you put the Eco Complete on it and you can keep that look like this. It is kind of dusty though, but it says it doesn't cloud your water. Definitely think I'm going to throw some of that out in the pond too. That would probably be good out in the, for the pond plants. Now I know I mentioned I wasn't going to do any plants in, or well not, wasn't going to really plant it up in these tanks. I am still going to put rock pebbles in there and I will more than likely put a Nubius or some kind of column feeder that doesn't really need to root or anything like that and that does well in low light. So I'm going to go ahead and still put that in there because it will give it mineral value. And I am going to do these two up here with sand like I did down here. Alright, so my brain was working a little bit, and I was thinking, what if I do down here with the API Pond Media, the Indiana Dirt, and then Eco Complete, so I'll have three layers. So I'd probably do this first, then the Indiana Dirt, then the Eco Complete. Just because I would want this to be settled on the bottom more than the others. Alright, and Wesley's getting some shots for us too. Got a few other plants from the other tanks. I think I'm going to throw in there to kind of help balance the ones that are lacking. Since I have room for a few other plants. There's some views. That's a white Anubius even though a lot of it's green right now. Uh, Monte Carlo and Luigi Arculata. I went ahead and put a fish in here too. That's a thread fin. Rainbow fish. I need to get more. Unfortunately I lost the female and just have him. He is very beautiful. And also put a Bowman eye rainbow fish in here. And since I use that dirty aquarium water these tanks are pretty much instantly cycled. Now, if there was an issue and the tank wasn't cycled, they'd more than likely be gasping up the air, and that would be a good sign to tell you that it's not quite cycled yet. But these guys came from a tank with sand, and they're slowly coloring back up. Alright, so I have to get some substrate for the sand and also I gotta get rock going and stuff like that to actually finish these other ones so I'm gonna break this video off and we'll do an update on the plants whenever we go through all these tanks that I end up finishing finish laying out all right so there you have it to be continued and I'm pretty excited about it I can't wait to get the other ones done and see how this goes and it'll be nice to be to to be to be continued because we will be able to see that growth and also be able to play with other medias as well and you guys can see if those fish lived or not I'm pretty sure they'll they'll be all right they're actually I'm looking at them right now they're actually frolicking about it's nice to be able to look down in my garage now and see those tanks that's pretty awesome so I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Give you a couple seconds. There you go. And until next time, everybody.